Hi, my name is Dr. Robbie Pesic, and I am an allergist immunologist at Arkansas Children's Hospital. On behalf of the Consortium of Eosinophilic Gastrointestinal Disease Researchers, I am here to review common definitions of eosinophilic gastrointestinal diseases. Eosinophilic gastrointestinal diseases, or EGID, are generally categorized as allergic disorders of the gastrointestinal tract. These disorders are named and best known for their association with eosinophils. Eosinophils make up a small fraction of the white blood cells in the peripheral blood, but are also found normally in many tissues throughout the body. Eosinophils function in a variety of ways to protect the host, including having antiparasitic and antibacterial functions. Eosinophils can modify the inflammatory response and are associated with allergic disorders. In EGID, there is an abnormal accumulation of eosinophils in the gastrointestinal tissue, leading to dysfunction. In EGID, there is an abnormal accumulation of eosinophils in the gastrointestinal tissue. Accumulation of eosinophils can lead to dysfunction of the tissue, and individuals affected by EGID often have clinical signs and symptoms of this dysfunction, such as abdominal pain, heartburn and reflux, difficulty swallowing, impaction of food, or many other symptoms. EGID can affect any part of the GI tract, and the diseases are named by the affected area. Eosinophilic esophagitis, or EOE, affects the esophagus. Eosinophilic gastritis, or EOG, affects the stomach. Eosinophilic enteritis, or EON, affects the small intestine. Eosinophilic colitis, or EOC, affects at least one part of the colon. EGIDs were first recognized as a disease in the 1970s. Since then, there has been increased recognition of these disorders across medicine. In addition, over the past decade, there has been a significant increase in the incidence and prevalence of all EGIDs, far surpassing the rate expected just from increased recognition. Despite this, EGIDs are still considered rare diseases, which can make research difficult. Research of rare diseases requires strong collaborative efforts between multiple stakeholders to advance our understanding of them. There are a variety of factors that highlight the importance of EGID research. Individuals affected by EGIDs have potential significant long-term complications, impact on day-to-day -day life, and barriers to care. In a study by the American Partnership for Eosinophilic Disorders, or APFED, in 2011, over 30% of patients had to travel more than 100 miles from their home to receive specialty treatment for EGIDs. More than 30% of patients and families reported a significant impact on finances, marriage, school performance, and their jobs due to EGIDs. Until recently, there has been no FDA-approved medications for EGIDs. Thus, many individuals with EGID are burdened with additional health care costs for medications or for formulas. Affected individuals may have decreased quality of life and increased risk of depression. In addition, there is still significant work needed to understand how the diseases work and how we can intervene to improve health. The molecular pathogenesis of many of these disorders is poorly understood. Furthermore, EGIDs can often overlap highlighting their relatedness and the need to identify better diagnostic and prognostic markers. As mentioned previously, there have been no FDA-approved medications for EGID until recently. As of 2022, there is only one medication, dupilumab, approved for eosinophilic esophagitis, the most common EGID. However, there are no medications approved for non-esophageal EGIDs. Other medications that are approved for other conditions but utilized off-label for EGID include corticosteroids. However, corticosteroids can be associated with dependency, resistance, and toxicity with both short-term and long-term use. Other biologics have been investigated and hold tremendous promise as future therapies. However, only one biologic, dupilumab, is currently used clinically. Food elimination diets can also be utilized as treatment for EGID. However, most of the evidence to date is limited to eosinophilic esophagitis and it is unclear whether these diets will be effective in non-esophageal EGID. In addition, there are no reliable tests yet to identify culprit food triggers. Gaining a better understanding of these rare eosinophilic diseases may contribute to our understanding of high eosinophil levels in more common diseases such as asthma. Recognizing the importance of this work, the National Institutes of Health have partnered with investigators across the United States and Europe to advance research of EGIDs. These efforts led to the creation of the Consortium of Eosinophilic Gastrointestinal Disease Researchers, whose mission is to improve the lives of individuals affected by EGID. 
This work is accomplished by partnership with patients and patient advocacy groups across the country, as well as with the FDA to focus on how best to meet the needs of these individuals. These partnerships have already led to advances, including guidelines for performing clinical trials in EGIDs and the first multi-center study to investigate the natural history of EGID.